An important part of studying vector spaces is describing the entire vector space using just a few elements. And if we can describe every element of the vector space in terms of a few elements, those elements are called spanning vectors or a spanning set of the vector space. So for example, let's look at a subspace of the two by two matrices. Let's define the subspace T of two by two matrices with real entries. By letting T be all the matrices of the form A, A plus B, zero B. where A and B are real numbers. Now we can check that this is actually a subspace of the two by two matrices by checking to see that it's closed under addition and scalar multiplication. So this set is closed under scalar multiplication because if we have a real number k the element k times a a plus b zero b is k a k a plus b zero k b which is Ka, Ka plus Kb, 0, Kb, which has the right form. So we've got two numbers on the diagonal, and then the number above the diagonal is the sum of those two numbers on the diagonal. And it's closed under addition, because if we take two matrices of that form, say a, a plus b, zero, b, and c, c plus d, zero, d, then we get a plus c, a plus c plus b plus d, zero, and b plus d. And again, we can see that we've got two numbers on the diagonal, and then what's above the diagonal is the sum of those two numbers. So our goal is to describe every element of the space in terms of just a couple elements. I think the easiest way to do that is to note that every element of t is a times the matrix 1, 1, 0, 0 plus b times the matrix 0, 1, 0, 1. All right, if we add these together, a times this plus b times that, we've got a, a, 0, 0, plus 0, B, 0, B, which is precisely A, A plus B, 0, B. So we can describe every element of the space T with the two matrices 1, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, 1. So since each element of T can be expressed as a linear combination, remember linear combination means multiple of one thing plus multiple of another thing. 
as a linear combination, something times 1100 zero, zero, plus something times 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. We say that this pair of elements one one zero 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 one zero one spans T or is a spanning set of T So if we pick another element that's in T, say 6, 10, 0, 4, we should be able to express this in terms of those two elements. It's going to be 6 times this one. And 4 times that one. So basically we're picking the number in this position, number that position. That tells us exactly what linear combination. And then we have a 1 in position 1, 2 to tell us to add the 6 and the 4. Also 2, 0, 0, negative 2 which is in that space because 0 is the sum of 2 and negative 2. So that equals 2 times this matrix 1, 1, 0, 0 minus 2 times that matrix 0, 1, 0, 1. Every element can be expressed as some multiple of this matrix plus some multiple of that matrix. So that, that means that these two matrices form a spanning set of T. Let's look at some more examples. So every element A1, A2 of the space R2, the real plane, is A1 times the vector 1, 0 plus A2 times the vector 0, 1. So I'd say that 1, 0, 0, 1 is the most obvious spanning set of R2. And I guess if we draw these two vectors in the in the plane, I'm thinking of the origin here. So those two vectors. One of us tells one of them tells us how far to the right to go, and one of us one of them tells us how far up to go. Obviously, we can get to any point in the plane by going to the right far enough, including negative values, and then going up far enough, including negative values down. Now, this graph paper is maybe not the only way to think of the plane. So we could look at these two vectors, which I'm thinking of as 0, 1, and 1, 1. And we could ask, does this span R2 also? So to check, I guess we would pick 
an arbitrary element to the plane and say, is there a way that we can get to that element by adding multiples of this to multiples of that? So we'll consider an arbitrary element a1, a2 in R2. and try to find a linear combination of 0, 1, and 1, 1, which, are e which is equal to it. So we have, let's say, multiple of 0, 1, let's say C0, C1, 0, 1, plus multiple of 1, 1 equals A1, A2. So we've got one equation for the first coordinates and another equation for the second coordinates. So 0 C1 plus 1 C2 equals A1 and then 1 C1 plus 1 C2 equals A2. Well, so I guess C2 has to be A1 and C2 is A1 then C1 equals a2 minus a1. So that's how we can pick our multiples c1 and c2 if we want to use multiples of these two vectors, 0, 1, and 1, 1, to get any point in the plane that we want at all, any a1, a2. So that means that 0, 1, and 1, 1, this set does form a spanning set of R2. For instance, if we want to get to 3, 5. So if we want to write this as something 0, 1 plus something 1, 1. Well, we have the formula down here. Our coefficients are C1 and C2. C1 is A2 minus A1, 5 minus 3. And then C2 is A1, 3. So let's just check that out. 2 times 2 times 0, 1 plus 3 times 1, 1 equals 0, 2 plus 3, 3, which is 3, Five. Yes, which is what we wanted. So since we can get any point at all we want, a1, a2, in terms of these two vectors, we say that these two vectors span the space. So I guess spanning sets aren't unique because we just named two of them. There's more than one spanning set for R2. 0, 1, 1, 0 is 1. 
is another. And actually, if we add if we add anything to a spanning set, then we still have a spanning set. Like if we take 12, negative 6, and 0, 1, and 1, 1. That's a spanning set too. Because to be a spanning set, we just need to be able to use everything in the set to get everything in the space. What we, meet, meet, we need to be able to use things in the set, not necessarily everything, to get everything in the space. And if we can use just these last two elements to get everything in this space, then having another element in there doesn't hurt. If we wanted to get 12, negative 6, we could use just the first element and then 0 times this plus 0 times that. Or we could use the formula above to get it in terms of these two elements. So I guess it would be negative 6 minus 12 times the first one, and then... 12 times the second one. So there might be several ways to describe an element in the space in terms of the spanning set. Now let's look at another possible spanning set and see if we can decide if it's a spanning set. Let's look at 1, 1 and 2, negative 1. And ask, is this another spanning set? for R2. So to answer, we have to show that we can solve C1 times the first vector, 1, 1, plus C2 times the second vector, neg uh, 2, negative 1, equals A1, A2. For C1 and C2, no matter what A1 and A2 are, we should be able to get every single point a1, a2 in the space, no matter what the coordinates are in terms of these two vectors. If there's even one point in the space that we can't get as a linear combination of these two vectors, then they don't span the space. Spanning means that you can use them to describe everything in the whole space. So we should be able to solve this if these are a spanning set for c1 and c2, and the solutions should work no matter what a1 and a2 are. The solutions might have A1 and A2 in their formulas, but we should be able to plug in any A1 and any A2 and be able to express it in terms of 1, 1, and 2, 1. So let's try this. So this equation tells us that C1 plus 2C2 has to be equal to A1, and then C1 minus C2 has to be equal to A2. And writing that in matrix form, we've got 1, 2, 1, negative 1, C1, C2, equals A1, A2.
And if this matrix is invertible, we could multiply both sides by the inverse and we get C1, C2 equals invertible matrix times the inverse of this matrix times A1, A2. The determinant is negative 1 minus 2, which is minus 3. So the matrix is invertible. So we have C1, C2 equals 1, 2, 1, negative 1, inverse, whatever that is, A1, A2. So whatever A1 and A2 are, whatever numbers, we could invert this matrix and multiply out, and that'll tell us exactly what C1 and C2 are. So no matter what A1 and A2 are, this allows us to determine the C1 and C2 which satisfy this equation here. All right, let me write down more generally what this procedure is that we're using to decide whether a set spans a space. So in general, to decide if a um, let's say if the n elements of a set of a set S inside of V. span the space V, we write C1 times element 1 plus C2 times element 2, etc., plus Cn times element n equals typical element of V. And show that it's possible to solve for C1 through Cn in at least one way. If there's several ways to express these elements, um, to take a linear combination of these elements and to get your typical element of V, that's fine. We need at least one way. So that we have to show that there is at least one solution, C1 through Cn, of this equation. This should work for all elements of V. When I say typical element of V, that's, some, that's an expression that, that represents all possible elements of the, the vector space V. So for example, 
Let's let v be the polynomials in x of degree less than or equal to 2. The set 1x x squared is obviously a spanning set. because every polynomial in V is every polynomial of degree at most 2 is something plus something x plus something x squared. So that's our linear combination of 1x and x squared right there. That's the typical element. So let's look at another spanning set, or another possible spanning set. So the question is, does the set of polynomials 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus x plus x squared span v as well? Well, to check, we'll write c1 times 1 plus c2 times 1 plus x plus c3 times 1 plus x plus x squared equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared. Let's see if we can solve this. So you know, two polynomials are equal if the constant terms are equal, if the coefficients of x are equal, the coefficients of x squared are equal, etc. So comparing constant terms on both sides, we get c1 plus c2 plus c3 equals a0. And then if we compare the coefficients of x on both sides, we've got c2x plus c3x equals a1. And then if we compare coefficients of x squared on both sides, we get c3. c3 is the only coefficient of x squared on this side equals a2. All right, now I can see by just by looking at this equation it's going to have a solution. So c3 is equal to a2. c2 is equal to a1 minus c3, which is a1 minus a2. And c1 is equal to a0 minus c2 minus c3, which is a0 minus a1 minus a2 in parentheses minus a2, which we can simplify to a0 minus a1 plus a2 minus a2 is just 0. Okay, so c1 equals a0 minus a1. So since we could solve this for c1, c2, c3, and we got a solution that we can plug any a0, a1, and a2 into, then yes, the set does span v. So yes, the set 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus x plus x squared does span v.
because the solution makes sense for any a0, a1, and a2. We can plug in any numbers a1, a0, a2 and get perfectly good expressions for c1, c2, and c3. All right, let's try another example. Let me change these three polynomials and use the same space. Let's use the polynomials 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared and 1 plus x plus x squared and 